All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name's Matt Crump. I'm gonna be your course organizer for Cognitive Psychology, uh, Psych 73800 this fall. And our first class is on Friday. I'm making this video and sending you this uh, as a something you could try, try to do before we meet in class. We'll go over these things. But basically, um, you know, over the course of the semester, we're gonna have different modules, different speakers talking about different uh, foundational issues in cognition and we're going to be doing weekly assignments but we'll also be doing a semester-long project and the first thing that we'll do in that project is make a blog so I think that blogs could be very useful for lots of reasons and we'll go over some of those reasons on Friday you can read about them right here on the course website um, more or less, I think that uh, with blogging, we can kind of actively produce our thoughts on a web page, and this can be useful as a kind of draft table. So, um, for example, my intention is for you to use your blog across the semester, contributing content that will build and you'll be able to use for your semester long project. Um, basically, writing a paper. Uh, across the semester rather than writing it right at the beginning. Now, I'll tell you right now, you could go out there and use lots of different things to make a free blog. And if you want to use one of these ones or one that isn't mentioned here, that's totally fine with me. I'm going to make a different recommendation, and this is to use R and GitHub in order to use a blog. And these are two free tools. R is a statistical programming language. Uh, GitHub is a website uh, for saving stuff online so that other people can access them and uh, many other things such as version control. And uh, both of these tools are super useful for lots of activities such as data analysis, sharing your code, sharing your work. And it turns out that it's pretty convenient to set up a blog with R, write it in plain text so it's pretty fast and easy to write stuff, and then share, share everything for free on GitHub. Now this does involve using some uh, things that look like programming languages, and if you don't have any coding experience, that's okay. I, I think this process is streamlined enough where even if you don't have coding experience, it will work and it won't be too painful. Also, it could be a gateway for you to learn uh, many more skills that could be helpful down the road. So for example, this course website I wrote in R and I'm hosting it on GitHub. If we went to the GitHub, my personal GitHub, you can see we're at Psych73800. This is the source code for that website. And um, it's all being compiled into something called this docs folder and if you have a docs folder on a GitHub repository, you can host it as a website, and that's why we can see this. So instead of making uh, a website, I'm going to have you make a blog in R. Now, I've written down the steps uh, right here. So there's some setup in terms of getting the software you need, and then there's some steps you need to take in R Studio to make the blog. So in this video, I'm going to walk through all of these steps, show you what software to download, and then once it's working, uh, show you how to get a blog set up and host it on github.com. I'm gonna make another video and put it down at the end here that shows some examples of writing content in the R Markdown language. Okay, let's get started. The first five things, uh, are getting the software installed. So we want to install R on your computer. There's the link. This is what the website looks like. Uh, you would just go and click download R here. These are all different mirrors. They all let you download R. So go there and pick one, doesn't matter which one, and download R for your machine. Next, uh, download and install R Studio. And make sure that you've done the first part first, otherwise the next part won't work. So then you need to go and get RStudio. Here's the website. 
you want to find the RStudio product and scroll down, get RStudio desktop, it's a free one. And that's those first two things. Next, get a free GitHub account. Here's the GitHub website. You just sign up, give it a username, an email and password, and you're good to go. Totally free. Uh, you'll want to be able to connect the files on your local computer to GitHub and go back and forth, and we'll use GitHub Desktop to do that. Here's the website. It's a free program. Download it for your computer. And last, I'm going to suggest that you download something called Zotero. It's a reference manager, sort of like iTunes for your PDF uh, or articles and stuff like that. Super useful. All right, so if you've done all those things, you should be in a position to follow these next steps and get a blog working. Now, there's lots of ways to make blogs with R. We're gonna look at something called Distill. Other ones include Blog Down and Hugo Down. These are all really great alternatives. I'm just gonna use Distill for now because it's pretty fast to set up. So I'm going to open up our studio here. It looks like this. All right. And when we're working in our studio uh, for this, oh, well, first of all, if this is the first time you've used our studio, you're going to have to install the distill package. So you go to packages, click install, type in distill. You need to be connected to the internet here. Uh, make sure this is checked, install dependencies, then hit install. And that should load up all the different things you need for Distill to work. Now, once you've done that, uh, it might make sense to reload our studio. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. I closed it, I've opened it. We should be good to go. You can check that you have it installed by scrolling down in the packages tab. Look for Distill. There it is, so it's working. Now we're going to create a new project in a new directory and we're going to scroll down and find distill blog and create that. So I'm going to give the title of my blog, well let's leave it as my blog, you can change that for yours. We want to click on configure for GitHub pages. We're going to save this somewhere. Uh, where am I going to save this? Let's see. Um, I'll just save it in, in this directory, I guess, stats class. And I'm going to call it my blog, create project. All right, we're done. We now have a folder called my blog, and it's in that directory where I placed it. The our project is called my blog, and these are the files we need to create the blog. If you want to check out what it looks like, you can always go to the build tab and click build website. So here's what it looks like. You can view it in this little viewer pane. It might pop up for you, or you could click this button and you could view it in a web browser. And so this would be the front page. There's a page where you can uh, add some about information if you want. Here's the home page again. This will list all your blog posts. There's a sample blog post here. If you clicked on it, you could see that sample blog post. But uh, currently, the template doesn't have any stuff in it. So we are, in terms of our instructions, we have gone through these four steps. And if you notice, uh, the URL is actually a file path. So these are um, files on my computer. They're not up on GitHub yet. So what I want to do is upload my R project to github.com. So if you've got a GitHub account and you've downloaded a GitHub desktop, you should be able to open up GitHub desktop. Here it is. You want to go here, go into preferences and sign in to github.com first. Now you're ready to add an existing repository. 
You want to go and find that folder that you just made. So mine was called my blog and you want to open it up and add it in GitHub desktop. And you can scroll down on the left. You should be able to find it. It's right there. Now this is a special kind of folder called a Git folder. Anytime you make changes in this folder, the changes will show up here in GitHub desktop. The idea is uh, you can save your changes uh, at any moment in time and then go back and look at those things later on. This is called version control. So I'm just gonna say first post. This describes uh, my set of changes. I'm gonna commit these changes. You have to do this every time. Uh, when you click this history tab, you can see uh, a list of things. So this is kind of useful for keeping track of what you've been doing. Next, to publish it on GitHub, just click the publish button. Um, I wanna unclick keep this code private because this will be public so that we can view it on the web. And we're just gonna go ahead and publish the repository. And wait a couple seconds. And we're good. You can verify that it's been loaded onto GitHub by clicking view on GitHub. And we're going to my GitHub page. And here it is. We've got a my blog folder. Here's all the files. And the website files are in the docs folder. Here they are. Notice this is the source code side of things. So if I click on index.html, which is the landing page for the website, I see the code and not the website. However, we can in initialize the website or serve the website by going to settings, scrolling down a little bit, going to GitHub pages, choose source master, and then docs. And this will build a website that's located in the docs folder. I'm just click save here. Now, when you do this, you can scroll down again you're still in the settings and you can now see the URL right here where you can access the website. I'm just going to go back to the code and it normally takes 20, 30 seconds uh, for GitHub to serve the website that's located in this folder. In that time, what I usually do is click this little wheel and add the URL here and press save. So that way, when I'm looking at the source code side of things, I can quickly jump to the website side of things. And, and let's click this link and see if it's working. All right, so now this is online, this is public. If you went to this URL, you would see this test blog that I've just made and you could read through it. All right, so where are we? We've made a blog, we've uploaded it to github.com and we've completed all these six steps. So let's talk about quickly making a new post and uh, look at that process. We're going to do two things. We're going to modify the first post and then we're gonna make a new post. So go to our studio and our posts are located in the underscore posts folder. The first one is called welcome. So I could go in there and I will see a RMD file. This is a R markdown file. Let's load it up. Here it is. Now this top part is some metadata. The title currently says welcome to my blog. I'm gonna say my first post. Um, that will be displayed as the title. There's a description, there's a little blurb you can write. So this is a first post. The default comes with Nora Jones as the name. I'm gonna put my own name here. You could then go and change, like if you have a website, like I've got a website, crumpmj.github.io. Is that right? <laughs> Doesn't sound right. Oh my God. Let's see, what's my website? Yeah, that, no, that's what it is. I was getting confused with the dots. No, it's Crump Lab, that's what it is. 
crumplad.github.io. My affiliation is Brooklyn College. And I think that is brooklyn.cuny.edu, let's say. I think that's what the website is. All right, so now under here, we can, uh, I can write my first post. And basically, just uh, write a plain text file. And I could keep going. When you want to uh, produce the website, you need to knit your uh, document and then you can preview it. And so we can kind of line up what's going on here. The top stuff is making the title, the description, my name, and I guess if I click this, it's gonna hyperlink to my URL. Whoops, I misspelled Brooklyn College, so I'm gonna change that. I'm going to re-knit this, and I made that change. So I can basically, this is the content, and this is the style in which it's going to be displayed. And you might imagine there's, uh, what's nice about this is you can learn how to write content over here in this one way, and then you'll uh, discover that there's many different styles or um, looks and feels that you can apply uh, on this side. So uh, when there's a separation like this between content and style, you don't actually have to change this part when you want to change the style. Uh, so for now, I'll just say we'll, we'll use the distill style. But of course, if you wanted to go in here and modify how this looks, you could totally do that. But I'm not going to go into that with this demonstration. Okay, so we've made some changes. And notice these are on my local computer. If I was to go to my blog that I just made, I don't see those new things that I changed. So we need to push those up to GitHub in order for the changes to take effect. So go to GitHub Desktop. You can see I made some changes. And I'm going to make a commit change first post. So now we've basically done two things here. We've made a first post. We've changed the first post. And now I'm going to push the changes up to GitHub. All right. Usually it takes, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds, sometimes right away for those changes to take effect. And we are, let's see where we are here. That's my local computer. All right, let's check it out. It hasn't been updated yet. I'm gonna reload this. Okay, there we go. It finally updated. So there's my changed first post. Uh, oh, it's still not up. It still hasn't updated this one. I reloaded it and there, there we go. Okay. So now when you go here, you can see these new things. Great. So that's how you'd modify that first post. What about making another one? Well, let's take a look at that. Basically, all you need to do is copy an existing one and you'll get another one. So let's do that. Click it, copy. I'm going to adopt a naming convention where we put the month, the day, the year, and some descriptive title. So second. So this is a post for August 26th, which is today, I think. And in here, because we copied everything, we've got this other stuff. I'm going to rename this. Doesn't need to say welcome. You could just leave it, I guess. It would be fine. But I'm going to call it second. Uh, just so you know, these files, the HTML and the uh, file folder here, both of these are generated when you knit this file. So I'm going to open it up. Now it's a copy of the first one, so it's got all this stuff. I'd have to change it to my second post. This is a second post. You know, now that I set up this stuff, I don't have to change that anymore. Um, and Basically, I'm now heading right in and I'm writing the second post. I've pressed saved. Watch what happens when I knit this document. So I get to see it 
And if I go back to the files, I see that I've created the HTML file and the folder. These are the resources for this file. When I go back to GitHub Desktop, I see some changes. I'm gonna say add second post, that's my message. I commit that, I push it, and now my changes will be up on github.com. So that's the basic process um, of using R and GitHub and distill to set up a blog. Uh, yeah, in the next video, I'll go into some examples of writing content in R Markdown uh, that could be closer to the kinds of things you might be doing in this course when you make blog posts. So this will have to do with, say, reading a paper, getting some references, doing a little bit of research, collecting your thoughts, organizing them in the blog somehow, making headers, that kind of stuff, adding uh, different kinds of formatting. So uh, I will get to that hopefully in the next uh, day or two. Uh, in the meantime, I hope this is helpful and I will see you on Friday. And by the way, we'll go over this on, on Friday as well.